I'd like to talk with you about one of my favourite topics, tourism impact, and this has been my main area of academic interest and research. In this particular presentation, I'd like to share with you a number of things, such as what is an impact? What are the nature of these impacts? What are they? And in particular, I'd like to focus particularly on social and cultural impacts. Leading from this, I want to look at the nature of the tourist host community interactions. And lastly, but not least, to look at how residents react towards tourism. So what is an impact? And we look at a simple dictionary definition. It simply says it's the effect or the impression of one thing upon another. So in the context of tourism, we're talking about the effect of tourism upon people, the community, or the environment. When we look at the nature of the impacts, it could be negative, it could be neutral, or positive. If it's negative, it means that these impacts are harmful and bad. If it's neutral, then the impacts could be fair. It's okay. If it's positive, then it will be beneficial and good. Understand and recognise that they are inevitable and unavoidable. So what are the, some of the issues that we need to consider? So there's some questions that we need to ask ourselves. How do we deal with these impacts? How do we minimise the impact, particularly the negative ones? And then we need to ask ourselves, do the benefits outweigh the costs or vice versa? Because if the benefits do outweigh the costs, then it's likely that people and the community will have positive perceptions. On the other hand, if the cost outweighs the benefits, then people are likely to develop negative perceptions and opinions. Tourists go home. Is this what you want to see in your community? Certainly not. So what are the impacts of tourism? Note here, there are five that have been mentioned. Environmental, economic, social and cultural. Now, if you look at any standard textbook addressing and reporting on impacts of tourism, these are the three that you would typically find. In my research, I came across two additional types of impacts, crowding and congestion, and the other one is services. All right, we'll talk about this later on in more detail. Social impacts. This refers to the changes in the lives of people who live in destination communities associated with tourism. It also refers to changes which result from personal contact between tourists, providers and hosts. In addition, what changes occur as a result of social exchange between the host and the guest. Cultural impacts. We're talking here about changes in the arts, the artefacts, customs, rituals, and the architecture of a people that result from tourism activity or development. When we look at the social and cultural impacts, I'd like to ask you a question and uh, and you may want to consider this in the context of your own community and destination where you live. When teaching tourism, I shared with my students in Hong Kong and asked them these questions. How does tourism affect or change my way of life in Hong Kong? You need to say to the students, how does tourism impact upon your life? And for a tourism management student, certainly, you know, tourism impacts upon them in a big way because they are studying tourism so that in the future upon graduation they'll be employed and earn their livelihood from tourism. I then asked them, what are some of the social impacts of tourism affecting Hong Kong? And one of the big challenges that are faced by Hong Kongers relates to the large number of mainland tourists who visit 
and at times the unsocial and then thirdly we ask when we talk about cultural impacts what are these and how does this affect Hong Kong? I'd like to talk next about crowding and congestion impacts. These type of impact you do not typically find reported or mentioned in textbooks because there are two aspects to this type of impact. One is the physical. So we're referring here to the crowds and the congestion which may restrict your activities. Increased noise, right? Resources are being strained and carrying capacity has been exceeded. And if you're in a community, you know, where driving is common, there may be increased driving hazards because of crowding and congestion. Besides the physical, we also need to examine and look at things from a psychological and social perspective. How does the crowding and the congestion affect your enjoyment of the tourism experience the tourists seek, are seeking? And how does it affect the resident's lifestyle? Right? If there is crowding and congestion and arguments break out due to queue jumping and pushing and things like this, it may upset people so that they don't have an enjoyable and memorable experience. Some people react to crowding and congestions with one of tolerance. Right? I will put up with it, but this is a must-see, so therefore I will tolerate. Another type of response is withdrawal. Oh, too many people. I don't want to be involved with the crowds and the congestion, and they just withdraw and don't bother becoming involved or visiting an attraction. The second of these um, special types of impacts is the service impact, right? What is the physical ability of local services to meet user demand? So what do we mean by here? Tourists come to a community and destination. They throw out their rubbish and their trash. Someone's got to clean it up. Who cleans it up and who pays for it? It's the local resident, right? If there's too many tourists, it may affect the quality of local services. And then it impacts upon the financial resources of the local service provider. <laughs> 